What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of 10 Minutes of Magic here on the MM Cast. My name is Ben Bateman and today I'm going to be talking to you about why Paulo Vitor da Rosa is the greatest magic player of all time. That's right, I said it. People have asked the question for years, people have pondered, they have wondered, is Paulo on the level of the all-time greats? Those all-time greats, of course, for most people, are going to be Kai Buda, John Finkel. Um, there are other players, but at this point, it does feel like with Paulo's win at the World Championship this last weekend, he has cemented himself, at least in that top three conversation, if not higher. And for this guy right here, he's the greatest of all time, the GOAT, the Michael Jordan, the Wayne Gretzky, so to speak. I'm gonna talk about why here in just a second. If you guys like the content you're seeing on this channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up below. Be sure to hit subscribe and of course the notification bell so that you guys know when we post brand new content about Modern, about Pioneer, and other stuff. Okay, so Paulo debuts on the Pro Tour back in 2003, right? He gets his first major win at Brazilian Nationals in 06. He does it again in 09 and his first Pro Tour in 2010. Now, the interesting thing to think about in that time period is the fact that Kai and John had really come onto the scene in the late 90s. So while Kai has a very concentrated resume, seven Pro Tour wins, seven Grand Prix wins, a ton of appearances, from about 99 to 03, Kai is easily the most dominant player. He's more dominant than John. He wins a ton of money. He's very, very, very good in this concentrated period of time. John, on the other hand, played a couple years earlier than Kai. Now, he and John are both going to be two-time world champions. John's got three wins at the Pro Tour. He's got three Grand Prix wins, tons of appearances as well. The other most dominant player, for sure. And the conversation of Kai versus John existed for a very long time. That's largely because that they played in such a similar era and were so dominant in that era. Nobody else in the years to follow really strung together a strong enough resume to actually challenge for that spot. What I think is so interesting about Paulo is that he starts in 2010 with that Pro Tour win, ends up winning another Pro Tour, ends up winning two Grand Prix, now world champion. So of course, on paper, if we're just gonna go with the classic sports argument of who has the most championships, it's Kai. Kai has the most decorated resume. But if you're gonna think about a full body of work and you're gonna think about the effect on the game, you're gonna talk legacy, that's to me where Paulo really starts to stand out. I think about the game from 1997 to 2004 and what it was, because I played Magic. I played Magic my entire life since 1995, and I played a lot of Magic during that time. I played competitive Magic since then. I played at Grand Prix, never been to a Pro Tour, but I definitely know what it's like to play on a long tournament day. I've sat at a table with Paulo before. I mean, I definitely have been around this stuff. By no means would I call myself anywhere near the players I'm talking about, but I have observed it, and I've seen things happen, like damage on the stack being taken out of the game, things like Magic the Gathering Online being introduced to the world in 2002. Things like Planeswalkers being introduced to the game. There are a lot of things in Magic that have kind of fundamentally changed the way that we see the math and the gameplay. It is still functionally the same game that it was in 1993. I'm by no means trying to discredit anything that John or Kai or any of the legends of the game did, but to me when I think about the fact that Paulo played at a high level starting in the era that these guys were ending, then he had to enter the phase of the game where Magic the Gathering Online was going to be available to any player that wanted to hone their craft. And we all know, at the highest level, when you have a great mind for Magic, it's the amount that you play it that ultimately changes your quality as a player. If you talk to any of the greatest players in the world, the ones that really chart often, they're playing a lot of Magic. They're often playing a lot of Moto because that's the easiest way to grind out games. Now they're playing more Arena, so on and so forth. But if you look at what Paulo's done, all of his success had to come in an era where there were more competitive players with more resources available, and he had to adapt with the game during that period. I give a lot of respect to John Finkel because of the fact that he has a more recent Pro Tour team win. He has a Pro Tour win in 2008, dating back to, it was a limited Pro Tour, obviously. You know, Kai has kind of uh, thrown his hat in the ring here and there. He's played an event or two, but he's definitely never re-entered at that highest level. But for me, when I look at Paulo, who, by the way, is also the all-time leader in, uh, in prize money earned playing Magic, He's not the greatest just because he's now the world champion. That didn't change it for me. He was already right there for me. It's the fact that he stayed consistent for such a long time. He has really developed his skills against different eras of the game. If you compare it to other sports, you look at, you know, I, I mentioned Michael Jordan. In the mid-90s, Jordan retired for two seasons. The Houston Rockets won two titles. I don't believe that the Houston Rockets are just invariably the best team of that era other than the Bulls. They have those two championships. I think a lot of the teams that the Bulls beat in those six championships are probably also very good. It's just they happen to play against Jordan. And I think when you look at like what Kai did, well, he was playing against that competition for those years. The same with John. You know, for me, Paulo, he's had to play against Kai and John. He's had to play against all different manifestations of the top players in the world. And he's had to succeed at every level of every uh, MPL or, or, or you know, uh, uh, 
pro series level change they've made to the organizational structure of the Grand Prix circuit, the Pro Tour circuit, the Mythic Championship. He's stayed consistent. He's continued to place in all of those different ones. And for me, it's the mark of the greatest player that's ever played, the greatest understanding of the game, the most love for it, the passion, the consistency. And he's been such a positive force and a pillar for players to look at that if you stick with it for a long time, you can achieve great things. So to me, Paul Vitor Domodorosa is the greatest player of all time. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Post your thoughts below in the comments. I would love to know what you guys think. Thanks for watching another episode of 10 Nuts of Magic here on the MM Cast. Like I said, hit that subscribe button and go check us out on Twitter at the MM Cast or patreon.com slash the MM Cast. We are trying to develop that Patreon to really cool stuff with it. So thanks for watching this one, guys, and we will see you on the next one. Congrats to Paulo Vitor, Dama Rosa, world champion.